Yo, we all know the drill at this point. Let's see who we can piss off today by simply talking about the most well-respected tier list in the Wuthering Waves community, at least on the EN side of things, right? We're here again at Pridewind.gg, taking a look at the Tower of Adversary tier list for patch 1.2 part 1. And we're mainly here because Jeji was added to the tier list, and that is a pretty big deal because we don't have a whole lot of supportive characters in the five star slot in fact she's only the second five star supportive unit in the game so we're going to go ahead and take a look at this as you can see she's at tier zero but i did want to shout out a couple of folks real quick here i am rivenous rexcellent and steparu they all help with this pridewin.gg tier list for wuthering wave so come give them some love and check them out for yourselves they have YouTube channels. I will be linking their YouTube channels in the description below. And again, pridewind.gg will be in the pinned comment and description below as well. So let's go ahead and get into this thing here because Jeji does make an impact in the meta, as you can see here from this. She's at tier zero. Some folks didn't feel like she was going to be all that good on release. She did. She kind of left a lot to be desired. And I kind of agree in some ways but I also kind of disagree in some ways, and I'll explain that in just a second here. Now, she does want to buff a DPS unit that is a Glacio DPS, right? And as you can see from the DPS slots right here, we don't really have that going on, at least in a strong way. We do have Ling Yang, who is a 5-star Glacio DPS, but he's not a premium 5-star DPS. And as you can see, he's amongst the worst DPS characters in the game right now. Poor guy, right? Poor guy. So I feel like Jeji is going to get stronger in the future when we do get a main like DPS that is a premium Glacio character that can actually deal some noteworthy amount of damage. When that does happen, she will probably be more on the niche side of things. But as it stands right now, she does technically have some buffs that are more neutral and can buff basically any unit. A Same with Yinlin, right? She does mainly want to buff an electro unit and she's still relevant in the meta despite that because she does have some more neutral buffs that can basically buff anybody and she's still basically the best buffer in the game as it stands right now she does have a pretty decent amount of damage too that she can dish out too as at least for a supportive unit right and i did get to pull jeji earlier on stream i did play her afterwards and you know game tester and stuff like that and she's she's a little goofy at first to learn but that's that's just how every character is right at the start but once you learn how to play her she is a she has a decent amount of fun more fun than i thought she would be she's no chang lee bro bro chang lee is the most fun character in the entire game and it's not even close bro this character is oh my god she's so much fun it's it's insane oh my god i, I can't even believe this character's in the game she's so cool she she does so much she does so much she's so cool you can run her as a main dps you could run her as like a in, in dual DPS team comps. You can even technically run her as a sub DPS character as well. But obviously she does so much damage. You want to keep her on field a whole lot and just get a little bit of extra buffing out of her that she does off of her out outro skill. Um, but yeah, she does so much damage that you can literally just run her as a main DPS and it doesn't even matter, bro. She's crazy. Um, and we will talk about Jeji in a second. I just wanted to point out before I forget that Encore also got bumped up to tier 0 0.5 this did happen like a week or two ago and i did not cover that because it was the only like actual change to the tier list when tower of adversary kind of switched around but i did want to point that out and it's not necessarily because of chang lee because believe it or not despite the fact that they're both fusion characters and chang lee does give a fusion buff with her outro skill the way that their rotations work, it's not necessarily syncing up super well for each other. You can run them together, but like they kind of still want a different character that syncs up better with them, and we don't really have that for them right now. They're, they're, they they're kind of have to settle for each other, I guess you could say. In fact, their best team compositions, at least in my opinion, and I think a lot of others as well, or don't actually run each other on the same team. You usually run them with other units, despite them both being fusion units and Chang Li technically having that outro skill. Again, you can do it. It's just not necessarily their best team composition. But as far as Jeji is concerned, like I was saying, she does have some neutral buffs that do make an impact. And when you're in Tower of Adversary, this is very important, and I don't think a lot of people think about this. Because we're a little bit lower 
on the on like the amount of supportive units we have in the game when you are in tower of adversary you start to run out of energy on your best units right that's why let's just use the healer slot for an example here that i want to make okay so a lot of us are using varina on the higher stages of tower of adversary right we're using baija kind of like in those middle stages in most cases and we're running somebody like Jian Shin in some of those lower stages or something like that. More of a filler slot, right? Because they're not necessarily a super duper Omega OP healer like Varina is. And like maybe some other characters in the future will be. So because of that same strategy, you have to run that same type of strategy on a lot of other characters too. Like your best main DPS characters like Jinshi and Chang Li, etc. are going to be used on those higher and harder difficulty levels of tower of adversary so you're going to be doing basically the same thing with your supportive units as well right not everybody has a resonance chain uh six sanhua like i do so like I, i'm pretty i'm pretty set you know what i mean as far as supportive characters kind of are but it is nice to have more variety and it gives us a lot more team building opportunities and and and, and whatnot which are very very important right because Mortify is a pretty solid support character, but he wants to support like heavy attack characters, etc. Sanhua is a pretty good one too, but she's not necessarily perfect for every team either. So these two characters, Yinlin and Jeji, are going to be very, very important in Tower of Adversary for those higher stages because you don't necessarily have a ton of really good supportive options. So having another supportive option is actually a really, really big deal. It allows us to have more variety when we are putting teams together in certain game modes especially in tower of adversary where you kind of need to have like three teams or like a, a bunch of different a bunch of different options in order to fit certain roles in order to be able to get those clears or those higher stages and whatnot you have to implement a bunch of different strategies in order to get those in order to like use your best characters on those higher stages and so let's say you want to continue running yinlin in those higher stages for example you're going to be able to use jeji in maybe some of those lower floors or vice versa maybe you have a team that jeji works well on or something and you want to use her with maybe yinlin or, or sorry with uh jinshi or something like that so you maybe want to use yinlin in some of like the middle floors or something you see what i'm saying because you have a limited amount of energy in something like tower of adversary which is what the tier list is based on okay so i want to see more of jinshi i've only been able to like play test her properly like throughout this night so it's four o'clock in the morning so i'm putting in a lot of you know play testing and and, and whatnot with her but from what I have seen so far, I think she is making more of an impact than I think a lot of people originally thought. Because my opinion on her going forward is that I think that she will start to fall off a little bit as time goes on. As we get more really strong supportive units, because she lacks that super strong like Glacio DPS that she wants to buff right now. But eventually, once you do... like. So right now, she's very impactful, right? But I think down the line, she'll start to fall off. She'll start to fade out once more, uh, like, you know, uh, impactful supportive units start to come out that, like, start to give really good buffs to, let's say, Jinxi. Like, the perfect support characters for some of these top DPS characters, once they start coming out, they'll probably steal her sunshine, I guess you could say. But one day, when we do get a, a premium, like, five-star or just very strong glacio dps character i think she will have her moment in the sun again however that time is not right now we don't know when that time will be and when that time does happen she will be fitting more of a niche role but as it stands right now she is making an impact in the game and i think a lot of people weren't necessarily thinking about the fact that despite her not necessarily syncing up perfectly with some of these top dps characters she is a supportive character, does have some neutral buffs, and that does make an impact at least right now. Again, I think that that might not that matter. That might matter less once we get more supportive characters in the game. But eventually, we will get a uh, like a five-star Glacio, and that'll be impactful again. But again, by that time, she will be more niche. So, if you're curious about whether you should be pulling this character or not, uh, I do want to point out that you know what I mean. We have some. 
characters. Oh, that's that's not the right one. I do want to point out that some other, you know, uh, potentially more impactful characters will be coming down the line that you may want to save your resources for. However, when we have characters that are going to end up being free, like Jing Li Yao, you're going to be able to save some material for characters like Shorekeeper too. Now, a lot of people are going to want to pick up his weapon because it's probably going to be a really strong weapon. Uh, like we don't have a lot of strong gauntlets necessarily in the game. So his weapon might be something you pick up, but a lot of us are going to be able to save for somebody like Shorekeeper. So if you're curious about whether you should pick up uh, Jeji or not, you probably could, like in my case, for example, I'm going to be able to pick up Jeji and I'm going to be able to save for Shorekeeper at the same time because thankfully, Zheng Li Yao is going to give us a bit of a breather. But I do want to point out that she is impactful right now, again, because we don't have a ton of other really strong supportive units. I think eventually she will start to sort of fall off. So if you're thinking about pulling her or you're curious about whether you should pull her or not, there's going to be some people that probably pull her and then down the line, they might feel like they regret the pull because other characters might come out and then she might not be as relevant anymore. But who knows when that's actually going to be? I mean, look at her right now. She's at tier zero, so she's impactful now. But that and so that kind of goes hand in hand with the fact that some people might not pull her and then regret it because she might make an impact on their account right now. So it's not like some super blatantly obvious situation of like, Oh, she's bad. She's not. She's actually pretty good right now in the meta. But she's also not, oh my god, the best character. Oh my god, must pull. Holy crap. Like, she does not speak that to us right now because she does not necessarily have that strong DPS character in the game right now that she wants to support like we were able to get with Yinlin. Bro, she makes Kalkaro actually good. I mean, look at this guy. He's kind of mid-tier based on his own damage. But when you pair him with someone like Yin Yilin, all of a sudden he becomes actually relevant. And I think that Jeji will be able to do that with another character. And if that character ends up being actually strong, bro, she's going to all of a sudden become super OP. So just something to think about. I want you guys to be able to make an educated decision for yourselves. Again, it's not some blatantly obvious situation of a must pull or not. Uh, but hopefully this was helpful and informative in any way, shape, or form. If it was, consider leaving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.